In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a custom hours and minutes time sequence in Google Sheets. If you've come from the previous tutorial, a lot of this is very similar. However, there are some formulas and functions that will change inside the main functions. So let's get started. So quite often, if we want to use a custom hours and minutes time sequence, we're relying on something like a little form entry field like this to update it. So for example, I've got a start time of 10.10 and in 1700 with a steps apart at 40 minutes, which results in this time sequence here. I can change my time sequence to be anything, any step apart. So I can make that 15 minutes apart and all my times are now 15 minutes apart, starting from 10.10. I can change that to a whole hour apart. And again, the same, I can change my start time to 8 a.m. And have my end time finish at 8.30 p.m. So that would be 20.30 in 24 hour times. And you can see it's all there. So why use this? Well, you could use this in a data validation drop down menu, or you could use it in building custom and dynamic charts. Let's dive in. So we'll head over to an empty sheet here. So first up in A1, type in start time, put a little colon there, add a space. Good to have a space because we're moving it over to the right. We don't want it to actually be touching anything on the on column B because column B smells. And then we want end time, colon, space, and then we want our steps, our time steps apart. So we'll say steps. I think I wrote steps there. Yeah, oh, step apart. Definitely is and a colon and a space. Great, let's format that so everything's over to the right hand side. So I'm gonna go over to my little formatty thing and hit right. And let's just go down to A6. And let's type in sequence start. Now you can put this on another page, no worries, but let's keep it all on one page to make things easy. And a little space there, rock on and move this over a tad. Great, and we want to duplicate the formatting that's in this uh, little input field area for the sequence start. So I'm just going to click on A3, use the paint format, and click on A6. Nice. Now in uh, B1 to B3 is where we're going to put in all the data that we're going to want to dynamically change. So I'm going to hold shift down and select B3. Cool. So let's uh, fill this in with a gray, and then we'll put a little border in here. Uh, it's probably there and we'll just put a border around it. Great. Now it looks like uh, you should be putting in field data here, which we will. Let's put in a time. We'll call this a 10. 10 has a nice little tester and our end time 1700. And we'll put our steps apart just like we did in the example as in 40 minutes. Cool. So as we start developing this, we've already got a key there. Um, so we're not making any guesses. Awesome, let's move on to the next step. So we could build out this very large and complicated formula right in the sequence start, but we're more likely to make mistakes that way and it's really confusing. To be honest, when I'm making a very large compound formula, I just break it down into little steps in the cells. Once I'm happy with each, uh, each step is working successfully, I mash it all together. So let's do that and try it out. So the first thing, let's go up into this D1. Remember, we'll delete all this at the end. So in D1, I'll write rows. Okay, so how are we going to work out how many rows we need for our start time and end time? Well, basically all it is, is that we need to subtract the end time from the start time and then divide that by the steps apart and add one. So first things first, we need to break everything into minutes. So to do that, we can use two functions, the hour function and the minute function. Very self-explanatory, I know. So we need to subtract the end time, which is B2. So let's do that example first. So we'll go uh, put this in brackets because we all want it all to occur inside this bracket. So we'll go hour, hour for our hour function. And we're just going to select B2. So I'm going to go over and click B2 and close the brackets. And that's going to give us 17 hours. Not great. We need this in a minute. So we just need to multiply that by 60. And then we need to add that to the number of minutes in there, which in this case are going to be zero, but that's fine. What if we're going to change it? It might be minutes. So then we need to extract the minutes from B2. So we'll type in minute and bracket and click on B2. Cool. 
Nice, so that is our start time. Now we need to subtract this total value. So let's close the brackets here. We need to subtract that. And you can see the result there, which is 1,020 minutes. And we need to subtract that from the start time. And to get the start time, we need to do the same thing. So let's open up some brackets here and type in our B1. Close the brackets. And we need to multiply that by 60 to get it into minutes. And then now we've got minutes here, so we've improved that uh, the formula works out for hunky dory. And I'll type in minute and then type in B1 and close the brackets. Cool. And we'll close this brackets out. So we've got this section here is calculating first, and this section is calculating first. Then this whole B2 as minutes is being subtracted from the all the B1 as minutes which is going to give this this 410 as a result that's how many minutes there are between the start time and the end time so now we've got the difference between the end time and the start time in minutes let's encapsulate this in a bracket and now to get our number of rows we need to divide this by the steps apart so let's use our divide character here and then we are going to do the same thing again so Grab our brackets and we need to go our B3, close brackets and multiply that by 60 and then add that to our minute and then B3 and then we'll close brackets again to encapsulate this section here and we'll hit enter to see what our results are. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes and 25 here. Now, we're, in a moment, we're going to use a function called sequence. And sequence doesn't work well with floating point numbers or numbers that have decimals in them. Our best bet here is to round down. Now, if I change the values here, so if we went to, say, a more whole number, if we went uh, 0, 09 0, 0, we've got 12. So that's rounded up to 12. Um, let's change this to 15. And that's given us 12.375. Now our best bet here is to round everything down and then add one to it to get our total number of start and end times with our steps in it. So what we're going to do, let's, uh, we can keep that there. And the first thing we need to do is to use the floor function. And as you can see, it rounds, well, it rounds number down to the nearest simple multiple of a factor. That's exactly what we want. So let's close the brackets around that. Did I open brackets? No. Let's go over there. Cool. All right, so that's given us 12. Now, 12 is not exactly what we want. We need one more value. So let's just add one to that. And now every time we change our start, end time, or steps apart, we've got our full number of rows. Cool, which will be 13. So we'll use this formula in a moment to calculate our sequence. And the next thing we need to calculate is our start value as minutes. So start let's add this in here and we simply need to use our hours and minutes converter again so we'll go equals and we'll go hour and that will be our start multiplied by 60 plus our minute and that will give us our start time in minutes Cool. The other thing we need to figure out is the number of steps in minutes, which is exactly the same. So we'll go steps, because I just confused myself, steps, and we will go equals, and we'll go uh, our, which will be B3, times 60 plus minute B3, and that'll give us our steps, which are 40 minutes. No, we didn't really have to change that too much. But what if we our steps change to an hour 40, for example? Cool. So now we've got these basic functions here. We just got them as a sample. We'll plug all this into our giant formula in a moment. So let's work on the next part of combining all these together to create our sequence. We are going to call this sequence just, and we will type in equals and we'll use a sequence function here 
and let's just open this up so you can see what it says. So it's going asking us for the number of rows we want. Well, that's going to be 13. And then we want how many columns we want. Well, that'll only be one because we only want it just running down. If you wanted to change that, you could flip these two so it ran across. And then we want the start, uh, the start number. And our start number is 540. And then we want the steps apart each value will be in our list. And that will be this, our steps. Cool, and let's hit enter, make sure we've got it. These are our steps in minutes, but we don't want minutes, we want to convert everything back to time. Now we can do this with an array formula, which allows us to apply a formula on each value in this array of values. So let's type in array formula here. So we go equals, and we'll go array formula. And let's just click on this range for now. And when we create uh, the larger version of this, we're actually going to put our sequence formula inside here. And then what we want to do to each value is divide them by the number of minutes in an hour times the number of hours in a day. Now we need to put this in a bracket so this calculation is done before it's divided by each value. And then we will close our brackets here. Cross our fingers and hit enter. And now we have these values as a decimal place. Well, Yagi, these aren't times. Why are you deceiving me? Yeah, I know, I get it. But allow me to let you in on a little trade secret. In Google Sheets, all times and dates are stored as a floating point number and times uh, are stored as a decimal of one. So each portion of this is a time as a decimal of one. Cool, so all you need to do to convert that into times is to use format. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this and tab it across so you can see, and hit Control V to paste and enter, so we've got a duplicate. Now I'm gonna hold, uh, click on F6, hold Shift down and go to F18, and go to Format, Number, and let's go down to one of these times. So I've got 24 hour time or AM PM. Let's go 24 hour times, kind of kind of the most common time in spreadsheet work. So now you can see that these numbers have converted into 24 hour time with our start time at nine o'clock and time at 1700 hours. Awesome, that's exactly what we want. So now we've got all our formulas all split up. Let's mush them all together into our giant uh, rat king of a formula. I'm going to move this down because it will be large. And let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to create our array formula. So we'll go array and open up the brackets there. So we've got our sequence here. So we'll just type in sequence. And first we need the rows. I'm going to tab out of this formula here, let it create an error. And I'm going to go over to this rows. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to copy and paste everything except for the equals. So I selected it, hit control C, didn't select the equals sign here. I'm going to head back to A7 and I'm going to put this in as the first argument for the sequence formula and hit control V. Cool. Now this is starting to get turn into a mess already up here. So let's tidy it up. I'm going to click on just after the brackets in array formula and move this down to a new row and hit control enter and space space. And I'll do the same for the sequence one just after that comment and hit control enter and hit space 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 space. Great. We'll just go to this side of the uh, closing braces and hit uh, control enter to bring it down. And now we're back inside our sequence, are we? No, we're in our, now we're inside our sequence. Hit comma now and hit control enter to go down to the next one. And control enter again, click back up into here. We'll go space, 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 space. And we'll type how many columns, we want one column. And then we'll hit comma. And now we need our start, so control enter. Our start is going to be this formula in E2. So I'm gonna tab out of this again to cheat and go over and grab this one. Select here, don't select the equal sign, hit control C to copy. Go back over to our sequence start. You can see it's already trying to work things out for us. Good on your sequence. We'll go space, 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 hit control V to paste. And that's got our start time. And we can tab out of that. And you can see that's already transforming. And now let's go over and insert our steps. So we'll head over to steps here, select this, Hit Control C to copy, 
go back into our A7 and hit common here, control enter, space, 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 control V, and then that should be that should get us pretty close. We'll hit enter again. Nice. That's given us our sequence here. Now we need to add in our array formula. So it was just this part here that 60 divided by 1440. So let's do that. We'll scroll down. So that was the end of the sequence. Let's just add space space there. Close that so you can see what I'm doing. And then here, then enter. And then we're going to divide our sequence by open up a bracket 60, oh, 60 times 24, close the brackets and cross your fingers and hope everything works. And awesome. That's our time sequence here. You can see this is slightly down one. So it's adding one down the bottom, but everything's identical. If things are going to change a lot, we need to apply our formatting all the way down the column. So we'll do that. I'll hold shift down once and down again. And then I'm going to go to format numbers, grab this 24 hour time, scroll back up to the top. And we don't need any of this anymore. So let's just get rid of that. So I'll select column D, hold shift down to column F, hit delete. And now we can, should be able to change this. Let's change this to say 12 o'clock. And we can see those times have changed now. We can move this up a bit so you can see what's going on. Change this to an hour. And you can see that has now changed into hourly increments. Um, and we could change this time as well to, let's say, uh, 23, 10. Now you can see it's changed in hourly increments and making the steps apart by an hour. Let's change this to 10 minutes. We could go 0, colon, 10. And now it's changed into 10 minute increments. Cool. That's it for creating custom time sequences in Google Sheets. Like I said, you could use these for drop down menus or custom uh, tables or charts. I'd love to see how you use these in the comments below. If you like the tutorial, hit the like button. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe. Until next time.